Hello everyone! Today I want to talk about Teleglitch Die More Edition. After having finished the game recently and loving every single freaking minute of it, I wanted to examine what it is about the game that I liked so much, and hopefully in doing so, convince anyone who's on the fence about whether to play it or not to plunge in. So don't worry, if you haven't played the game before, this is the perfect video for you and I will not be spoiling anything about it. So don't worry. Okay, if you're unfamiliar with the game, let me introduce it. So, Teleglitch is a roguelike, top-down shooter with pixel graphics. And here's the story. You are on a research base on a planet light years from Earth. This research base has been researching some very disturbing and dangerous things. And, not surprisingly, everything has gone wrong. And everything wants to kill you. You are the lone survivor, so you are the only one who can defend yourself from these things. And your goal in the game is to reach the long-range teleporter that will take you all the way back to Earth. But, to get to the long-range teleporter, what you have to do is go through all of the short-range teleporters to get to the next level. So you go from level to level, using the short-range teleporters, moving within the facility, progressing, and then at the end you'll get to the long-range teleporter and hopefully be able to get back to Earth. So that is the basic structure of the game. And let me just actually jump into the game now. So if you're starting a new game, you will be starting from level 1, and you start with a randomly generated weapon. Or, well, I guess it's not quite randomly generated, but you start from one of the... Uh, a random selection of one of the pre-made weapons that they've made for you. So you might start with the awesome rifle, or you might start with a shock blade, or something like that. So let's just get in. This is some backstory, I'm just gonna skip it for the purposes of this. Okay, so now we're in game. Alright, so now you know what the game's about. So you're going from level to level, you're shooting enemies, you're trying to progress, you're trying to get to the long-range teleporter, all the while defending yourself against everything that is trying to kill you, which is always changes level to level. You're going to be const constantly encountering bizarre and terrifying and even more powerful enemies as you continue. And you will be fighting them with bizarre and even and ever-changing weapons. Some weapons that you will simply find in later levels and other weapons and explosives and stuff that you will craft. And yes, this game does have a crafting system. Let me demonstrate that right now, actually. So this, all this stuff in the top left, this is your inventory. Right now I just have a 9mm pistol, and I have four of these RDX 250s. And all of these slots here are just inventory slots. So you can just scroll through everything with the mouse wheel. At least this is using the default keyboard and mouse setup. So I'm not sure what you would be using, but yeah, for the default setup. You just scroll through it. And if you open up the crafting menu, it will show you everything you can make, given the items you have in your inventory. So if I press the crafting menu, it's showing me that I can only make one thing. I can use two of the RDX 250s to make one RDX 500. So I can combine two small explosives to make one big explosive. So you just click. Hey, I want to make another one. Click. Simple as that. You can move stuff around your inventory. So you can sort your inventory, which is going to be very important. Because when you press the number keys, it will uh, select that slot in your, in your inventory. So if you press 1, it selects the first one. If you press 2, it selects the second one, and so on. So what you're going to be doing is sorting everything in your inventory so that the most important stuff is up top, so you can select it very quickly and switch between it. So there's a lot of strategy just in your inventory management, and they make it very easy. It's very easy to just move stuff around. I want to put that down there, up there, around here. Yeah, very nice, very smooth. So in the game, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be progressing in the levels, looking for the teleporters to get to the next level, defeating the enemies, you're going to be finding chests which has random loot inside of them, random weapons, you might get some ammo, you might get some explosives, whatever you'll find. It is, of course, very randomized, so every single time you die, you will come back and play a different level, and you will find different loot, and you will start with a different weapon. All the while, you will be crafting stuff, and there are a lot of things you can craft. A lot of things. And at the beginning, you're not going to know what they are, and that is a large part of the fun of the game. You're going to be discovering some really cool stuff that you can make. And of course it will never quite be adequate to keep you alive, it'll seem like. It'll always feel like you're trying to duct tape two things together just so you can get past the next room. Which is one of the wonderful parts of the game, because being a roguelike, or at least having roguelike elements... I'm not actually sure if they describe it as a roguelike or if it just has roguelike elements, but anyway... Being in that vein with the randomization and all of that, it of course has permadeath. Which is freaking awesome. And horrifying but also freaking awesome. So, let me demonstrate some of the things that are really cool about the game, and then I will wrap up. The game has 
really freaking good graphics. All right, when you first look at it, if you're looking at it right now, you might say, okay, this looks super, super basic. Maybe it doesn't look too good. However, where the game really shines in the graphics department is when things are in motion. Even though it has pixel art, it is, or at least it looks like pixel art. I'm not actually sure if it is, but yeah, even though it looks pixely, the game is actually incredibly fluid. And let me show you what I mean when I move. So l let's look at some details here, okay? The refuse on the ground, just the random stuff on the ground, it's not static. You can actually move it. You can push it. It will stop you from going in. Like now, look, I can't go in here because this bench is blocking my way. So I can push it out of the way. So even this random stuff on the ground is interactive. And see this like fence piece that I'm walking on actually slows me down. Nice and interactive. Okay, when you move from room to room, the view will zoom in and out depending on how big it is. So in a small room like this, it'll zoom in. If you go out to a bigger room like this, it'll zoom out. And if you take out your weapon and you go to aim far away from you, the view will zoom out to accommodate where you're aiming. So I'm going to aim with this. Bigger and smaller. And bigger and smaller. And in fact, if you're... If you're uh, going around like a curved corridor or something like that, the view will actually rotate with you as you're going down that corridor. So it's constantly zooming in and out and twisting all around and adjusting based on what you're doing and where you're aiming. Like I said before, stuff on the ground moves. And there are some very cool advanced effects applied on top of this simple looking pixely art. For example, when you shoot a weapon, like say this 9mm pistol, if I shoot it, if you look at the weapon firing, there's some really cool, like, color-shifted distortion effects. Look at it. Actually, let me zoom in. There we go. It's just really cool looking. And there are many other ways where this game... There are many other things in the graphics department that make this game look cool, especially when it comes to the enemies. However, I don't really want to show that because I don't want to spoil any of the enemies you will encounter. So I'm just going to leave that out. But I will say, some of the enemies look very cool and move very fluidly as well. Well, actually, they all do. Everything does. Everything is far more fluid and has far more movement than you might expect just from looking at, like, a still screenshot of the game. So, yes, it, it really comes to life in movement. And these sounds are also excellent. They sound great. And probably the most important thing about the sounds, too, is just from a gameplay perspective, they, they sound cool, of course. But a really nice thing about the sounds is that they're very distinctive. Every gun, every enemy, every environment has its own distinctive set of sounds. And how this impacts the gameplay is that you're going to start recognizing enemies just by the sounds they make before you even see them. It's really cool. And same with the graphics, too. Uh, the graphics are very... everything's very distinct. Even, like, even though things might look like they might get muddy and kind of muddled and it might be hard to see what's going on because of how pixely everything is and because of the fact that everything's moving, but it doesn't. This game's actually somehow... Somehow, despite how it looks, and despite the fact that everything's always moving all the time, it manages to be incredibly clean and clear. Enemies are all distinct. You always know exactly what you're fighting, and you can instantly recognize it by its looks and by its sounds. So, just purely from a gameplay perspective, the graphics and the sound are awesome, and of course they're just good-looking and good-sounding on their own. Alright, another cool thing about it is just how tight the control system is for this game. The controls are very simple and very straightforward, which is absolutely vital when your every movement is extremely important to surviving. You need to have, like, a laser-focused, perfect control of your character, and you do. One of the best things about the controls is the fact that your movement and your aiming and shooting are decoupled. What I mean by that is that you can move any direction you want and shoot and aim in a completely different direction. So WASD controls where your character moves. And if you're holding a gun, like I am right now, this 9mm pistol. If you... Okay, well if you just left click right now... He will not actually use the pistol, he will just use the knife in whatever direction you're aiming. So you can move and knife in whatever direction you want. So you can move backwards and knife behind you. Or knife in front of you. Or knife to the side of you, whatever. You can aim any way you want. So you have really nice control of that. And if you wanted to actually use your pistol, then you would hold down the right mouse button, which brings out this aiming thing. And while holding the right mouse button, you would left click. And once again, you can move any direction you want and shoot in any direction you want. So you can move like this and shoot backwards. Or you can shoot all around. 
so you have very, very tight and intuitive and simple control of your character. You can cycle through the stuff in the inventory. Actually, let me pick up this can. Pick up that can! You can cycle through the items in your inventory using the scroll wheel or using the number keys. So you're probably going to end up with a couple key things at the top. Some of your favorite weapons, maybe your med kit and whatnot, near the top. And then the other stuff you might access using the scroll wheel. So very simple. Again, stuff is crafted just by pressing C. That's how I made those big explosives. And it just shows you everything you can combine. You pick up stuff with the space key, you drop stuff with the Q key. I can drop this can, drop these explosives, pick them up with space. That's basically it. That That is everything you do. Spaces interact, you know, space picks up stuff. Space will open up chests. Space will use buttons. It's very simple. There's a very small learning curve when it comes to the controls, and the controls are snappy and extremely responsive and smooth and simple, which is utterly vital in a game where, again, your every movement is everything. Okay, so what is it about Teleglitch that makes it so amazing? It's not any one of those elements, it's all of them combined with the rest of the game. So let me explain something first. The way you, pr you can make two kinds of progress in this game. Okay, you can progress by unlocking the ability to start from future levels. So if you go up here and see new games, see I have level 1, 3, 3B, 5, 7, 9. So once you reach a certain level, you will unlock the ability to start from a further level. So once you reach level 5, you can start from level 3. Once you reach level 7, you can start from level 5, and so on. So that's one type of progress you can make in this game. Because there is no... You can't just save and load a game. There is permadeath. It's meant to be played in... You know, you play through the whole life. The second kind of progress you can make is gaining understanding of the game, which is more nebulous and, and not as concrete as unlocking the ability to start from a future level. But it's also probably the best part of the game. At least it was for me. I think that's where the core magic of the game comes from, is simply learning how to play. So let me explain what my experience was like so you can get a understanding of the overall structure of the game and what makes it so cool. So when I was first playing, I had no idea what the hell to do. I didn't know what enemies I was going to fight. I didn't know what the levels were going to look like at all. Because even though the levels are randomly generated, each one has a kind of theme going on in it. So there are certain things you'll recognize within the level, even though they are procedurally generated. So I didn't recognize the environments. I didn't recognize the enemies. I had no idea what I could craft. I didn't know how to use my weapons. I didn't know what the enemy's weaknesses are. I didn't know their movement patterns, etc., etc. I didn't know what they sounded like, and so on, and so on. I had no idea what I was doing. And of course, I died a lot. I died a lot. It is called the Die More Edition, after all, so what do you expect? However, the core magic of the game is in understanding more about it. Because every time I died, even though there was the loss of having lost that life, and having lost the progress I made within the level, even though I was losing the progress I made within the level, I was gaining understanding of the game. Because there's always, always something to learn. And because the controls are so tight and so responsive, and your character does exactly what you want it to do, there are no cheap deaths. Every time I died, I knew exactly what went wrong, I knew it was my fault, and I was just filled with a passion to come back again and again and try to improve myself, because I, I wanted to apply the things I'd learned by dying. So I'd come back, I'd die, and I'd come back, and I would use my newfound skills. I might think, okay, now I know I can craft this and this, so I'm going to save up my stuff so I can craft it. And those crafted things can be used against this enemy and this enemy, and it's very effective. Or, this new enemy I've never encountered before killed me. Now I know how it beha behaves, so now I can fight it. Or, now I know this weapon is particularly good against this enemy. And so on. Or I might recognize a sound and know, oh, that sound means that that enemy is going gonna, is gonna to be coming at me. So you hear that sound before you even see it, and then you'll start to prepare for that enemy that is going to come. And, well, you'll especially learn the boss fights. The boss fights are some of the most intense parts of the game. Actually, no, the most intense parts of the game. The boss fights are freaking epic. And those are going to be a lot of fun to learn, trust me. Oh yeah. So every time I died, I was gaining understanding of where I went wrong, and how I could apply my new knowledge in the future. So it always wanted, it always made me want to come back. I never felt, uh, I never felt like deflated or defeated. I always thought, the first thing I thought was, I want to come back and do it better. I know how to do it better now. Every single time I died, I just wanted to do better. And that's where the magic of the game comes from. 
is from wanting to improve yourself and knowing how to and being able to apply the things you've learned yourself and figured out on your own. It's such a fun experience. This is the most, probably the most tense and difficult game I've ever played in my life. There will be moments where you will be scared out of your mind. You will hear a certain sound and think, oh god, it's that enemy. No, please no. You'll instantly recognize it. There'll be moments where you have all these things in your inventory and you're thinking, oh, should I craft this or should I save it? And maybe in the future I'd be able to craft this. There gonna be mom there's going to be moments where you're thinking, should I shoot or should I save my ammo? Because I might run out of ammo before I fight the boss, and in which case I'm screwed. So this game is constantly filled with extremely tense decisions, which thanks to permadeath, have an extreme amount of importance, right? You can't just say you can't just save the game, try something, have it fail, and then just load your game again. If you fail, you have to go back. You will lose. Maybe if if you're just in the beginning, maybe you'll lose lose a couple uh, minutes of progress. If you're further in the game, maybe you'll lose a half hour. In some cases, I lost like an hour and a half of progress within the levels, which might sound demoralizing. But there's two interesting effects from that. One, you are actually losing something, so it makes your decisions that much more important. The decisions are extremely important, and you will feel very invested in them because they really do matter, because you're actually going to lose something. But, because there are two kinds of progress in the game, going through the levels and understanding the game, because of that, I never felt completely defeated, because even though I was losing my physical progress through the game, I was always gaining understanding. So once again, it's, a, it's great that there's two kinds of progress. So you will agonize over decisions. You will sweat over these decisions, and you will rack your brain trying to think, oh god, do I do this? Do I do that? Do I... Ah, I don't know. Do I drop this weapon so I can carry this one? And that is, once again, more of the magic of the game, is how invested you will be in your character. Okay, well, I hope I have done a good job summing up what I love so much about this game. That really is the core, the, the discovery, the learning, the app, and the application of the things you have learned. That, I feel, is the core of the game. That is what makes it magical. And then everything else just adds to the experience and lifts it up. You know, it's a beautiful game, I think. It's incredibly fluid. It sounds great. It has wonderful, distinctive, unique environments. It has unique enemies that are always changing. As you progress on the levels, you will constantly encounter new enemies. It has a really interesting graphic style. It's not just a normal kind of pixel art look, but... You know, there's just more movement and more fluidity to it than I'm used to. Again, you can move stuff on the ground, and you can see how this, like, black sort of... fog of war sort of thing moves around. It's, it's really cool. Just everything moves so much. I think it's beautiful. It's set in a wonderful sci-fi, wonderful, unique sci-fi sort of universe. There's tons of terminals around that will give you... They'll give you tons of backstory on what's happened within these levels. Gives you little, just little tidbits of information about what's gone... Uh, what preceded everything going wrong. And stuff like that. So there's lots of cool backstory. It's just, it's set in a really interesting universe. So all that just adds to the magic of the core experience to create a package that is just freaking amazing. I mean, I played, just for some context on how difficult this game is and how awesome it is, I played for, um, before I finished the game, it took me 25 hours to finish the game. And at the time of release, at full price, it was $13. So $13 for this amazing game that was incredibly fun that I spent 25 hours completing. That is, that is amazing. That's such an amazing deal. And that's at full price. It's only going to get cheaper in any sales or anything like that. But, I mean, it's totally worth it even at full price. Hell yeah. This game is great. So, if you are thinking about plunging into this game, which I obviously recommend highly because it's awesome, but if you are doing it, I have one very strong recommendation. I very strongly recommend that you learn the game completely by yourself and don't read any guides or anything like that because you you could read guides on how to fight enemies and uh, what to look for what sort of stuff you can craft and things like that but I really recommend you don't because I think that would harm the core awesome experience of what makes teleglitch so amazing which is learning it for yourself and applying your understanding to the next time you play that is where I feel the magic of the game comes through it is. It will be, trust me, it will be so satisfying when you're fighting through enemies that you've 
encountered and you've learned their patterns and you know how to fight them and you go to apply your knowledge and it works and when you get through a boss after you fought it once or twice or a couple times and you finally learned how to fight it and you apply your new knowledge and you defeat that boss and you move on to the next level it is so satisfying you will love that feeling so I feel like if you if you read guides on how to play the game I think you're hurting the experience but I don't want to tell you how to play the game you might enjoy it maybe you enjoy it more having read guides and tips all over the place and stuff like that maybe you will enjoy it more that way I don't I don't know I don't want to tell you how to play the game but that is definitely my strong recommendation is to go into it with a clean slate try to know as little as possible that's why I'm avoiding showing you too much I'm not even showing you any enemies and just learn it for yourself because it will be so satisfying when you do learn something really it's so satisfying okay so in summary I love Teleglitch, and I hope you will too. Oh, hi there. Did you think that was the end of the video? Did you really think that was the end of the video? How could you be so silly? Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna blow myself up. Somehow, you know that this is not the end, and you shall rise again. You've died. Goodbye.